What is up, it's your boy Johnny Shreve, IFBB Pro, Mr. Tell Like It Is. Today, guys, we're comparing dumbbell ladder raises versus cable ladder raises. Find out which one works best for you. Let's dive right in. Okay, so before we actually make the comparison, we have to make sure we are comparing it on equal level, which means we're gonna compare it using good form with both. So I'm just gonna assume that the viewer is gonna be using good form to perform both movements. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what good form looks like, and then we're gonna compare cables versus dumbbells. Okay, so without using anything at all right now, we'll just look at where our full range of motion looks like, our body posture, and so forth from floor to core. So basically in an athletic position, just like rested position like so. Now, where is our full range of motion? Well, basically it's gonna go from hands being down to coming all the way up. And for the most part, most people stopped here, but we're just gonna make sure that we're getting the best out of our full range of motion. So from here all the way up, and we're gonna go a little bit above parallel. Why? Because we're gonna get rid of the argument already that you're gonna not get as much forward of motion by stopping at the shoulder. So for both movements, cables or dumbbells, our full range of motion and our technique will look like from down here all the way up, a little bit over parallel of your shoulders. Now, what does this look like from the side? Again, same form on both. If we're still here, we don't wanna be here. We're gonna be slightly in front, a little bit of an angle, say like 45 degrees. So from here, it's gonna start from the front and 45 degrees into right here. There is your full range of motion and coming down. So what it looks like with a dumbbell, and from here all the way up, and then all the way back down, and from the side, all the way up, and all the way back down, right? No hyperextension, no rounded back, no swinging, just from here, all the way up, and then all the way down. Now let's move over to cables and compare the two. We're gonna cover tension and range of motion. Let's go. So let's compare tension with both dumbbells and cables. So the form we use for dumbbells is gonna be the form you're gonna use for cables. To make sure we compare this completely properly because again, when we're at our bottom range with dumbbells, we can be able to compare that same technique with that same bottom range using cables. So we're comparing tension, range of motion, head activation. We need to be in the same body position to properly compare which one is better than these two. So when we're talking about cables, I'm going to have to obviously line these up at the bottom. And because we're doing bilateral, which means at the same time, I need to use both of these. So for me to be able to do the proper lateral raise comparing it to the same form as dumbbells, this is how I have to be right away. Same idea as before. And you can see already just by putting myself in position, there's already tension right away. So our form for our cables will be the same way. We're pulling up and basically out the same way. We're not pulling back. We're just pulling out and up. And we still have that little bit of the 45 degree on our arms and up and again 45 degrees not back here but right here in front just like the dumbbells a little bit higher than your shoulder height and then back down so we can compare the two which one has better tension overall well right away just setting up in this machine to make it similar to holding the dumbbells i'm already feeling my delts activated so give you guys a view from the front setting up my cables from the low now when i'm getting my hands to be the same place they were with dumbbells, which would be here. Right away, because the weights, one's pulling me this way and one's pulling me this way, there's already tension right from me just standing here. If you watch me right now, me standing just like this, you probably see my delts are firing off right now, compared to me standing like this. The difference is gravity. Right now, the only thing that's really being challenged would be my traps if I had to pull them up. My delts are gonna do much with dumbbells until I start to push away and pull away like this. Now, if you can see where I'm at with my dumbbells, I'm already far away from my body for me to start really feeling my delts where I was pretty close with the cables and there was already tension. So right away, cables are gonna have an edge in terms of having tension right from the start of your lift. So when it comes to head activation, how much of the delt is being used with doing dumbbells or cables? Now. When it comes down to it, guys, no matter what, when you're doing anything with your shoulders, the entire delt is active. It's being used. Much like everything else in your body, you can't necessarily isolate one portion 
of the delt. You can load it and it'll get the attention it needs, but the entire shoulder is going to be working. So if I'm doing this, not like my rear delt isn't doing anything at all. It's still assisting in some way, shape or form. Only the load right now is gonna be primarily on my lateral height of my delt and a little bit on my front delt because I'm having it a little bit in front of me, that 45 degree angle on both. So then when it comes to full range of motion, that is something that you can control with both cables and dumbbells. So we're talking about full range of motion. Again, my full range of motion is gonna be from here all the way up and then all the way back down. There's my full range of motion. It's gonna stay here and here. But we're comparing both full range of motion on both. What makes the biggest difference? So I have both 25 pound dumbbells, 25 pounds on each side of the cables. Right from here coming all the way up, there's tension all the way through. The different kind of tension when it comes to cable tension and dumbbell tension. The difference is, the more I pull this thing up, it's pulling me down much almost like resistance bands. Similar, because on this side here, that thing's gravity is pulling me down the entire way. When it comes to here, even though raising this dumbbell higher than my shoulder is causing tension, there's a part of it where it's not as hard because it's not necessarily pulling me back down more so than it was with the cables. So if I'm doing proper form with dumbbells and coming up, and squeezing and controlling the weight. Great movement, great activation. When it comes down to this, tension right away, right from the bottom all the way to the top is that much harder and greater. When it comes to full range of motion, head activation, and tension on the muscle, cables are edging it out by a small margin, by this margin. Basically, the part where the dumbbells really don't do much is coming from here to here. From here all the way up, the delts are working. With dumbbells, right when it gets to here, not much. Why? Because again, you're not being challenged this way. You want to be challenged on this range. So pulling out and up needs to be challenged the entire way where dumbbells at the bottom, not really doing much. We already talked about tension, activation of the head of the muscle, and then full range of motion. Right now, I'm getting edged out by cables. Now let's talk about versatility. That's an obvious win. When it comes to dumbbells or cables, we could do so much more. When it comes to, say, changing a little bit of the angle, all we have to do necessarily is move the cables up or move them down. If I want to be a little more versatile and just change small little fractions of what I'm doing here in terms of where the weight's coming, I can literally just put the load more so on my delt by just changing my hand positioning. Because the weight's pulling me back in, when it comes to cables, right now, lateral head. If I wanted to, I can go back and still get lateral head. I can also raise the cables up slightly, standing in the same place, and I'm still getting lateral head and rear delt. When, if I'm using dumbbells, I can do so much more with this. I can always ladder head from here. If I want to hit more of the rear delt, I can kind of bend over a little bit more and pull it to here. Then it gets that much harder. Or I have to use a bench for chest support or something. I have to move around a lot more than I can just literally sit here in the same place and I can just adjust the cables up and down or simply just move my hand from here to here. Hey, a lot of you guys have watched the video, but not subscribed, so do your boy a favor and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that post notification button as well too. So next time I put a video, you'll be the first ones to get it. Hopefully by now you guys like the video, so if you do, hit that like button. Also, grab my ebook, Final Diet, there's a link in the description below. Get it now, back to the show. Okay, cool, so now we gotta talk about muscle mic connection. I think it's one of the biggest points when it comes to whatever exercise that you're choosing to do. So whether you like this movement or not, whether you are all for dumbbell lateral raises or you're all for cable or even resistance bands, I don't care. When we're talking about lateral raises, it's whatever the movement that works best for you that's gonna connect you to the muscle. So when it comes to this, what's better? Dumbbells or cables? Well, I can tell you right now that cables might give you that much more of an edge with muscle mind connection and here's why. It comes right down to tension right from the get-go. Now, if I'm holding dumbbells, for the most part, and I'm taking some experience from past athletes I've coached and myself. When I'm sitting here right now with the weights, before I'm about to do anything, yes, I got a good activation. Yes, my muscle mind connection is already engaged, but right now, there's not much for me to connect to because right now, I'm more so thinking about the weights in my hands, and that's really it. 
I'm really not feeling the muscle or thinking about it too much, even though I know I'm gonna do a lot of raids. Now I'm really feeling my delts. So from here, I'm feeling the delts and I'm feeling them back down, but now I'm really not anymore. When it comes to doing cables, I pick the weight up, I'm pulling it out, and to put myself in the right position, I can feel my delts right away. Right from the start, because the tension is immediately on my delts, I'm already feeling my delts. So the second that I start to try to move this thing into the proper full range of motion, I'm already feeling my delts work it right away. So you're gonna have a little bit of an edge when it comes to muscle mind connection. If you're trying to find or feel your muscle mind connection more in your lateral delts or any part of your delts, this is probably the best way to go at it. Get yourself in cables and right from the bottom, we can feel the weight. And a couple of things we can do is just kind of push out right away. Just start pushing out from the back of your hand and just feel your delts. They're already active. And we can take that feeling all the way up and all the way down. So when it comes to, I would say, connecting with dumbbells, the muscle mind connection is gonna come more so in you being able to slow the rep down and then feeling the weight on the way down. But again, you're not gonna get full tension like you would with the cables. And that's gonna kind of segue us into the next part, which is progressive overload. I don't know how many times that I've coached at a gym where we just need to go up by a small margin. And that gym only had, I went up by fives or tens. The little between weight increments are massive. When it comes to the delts, because they're such a small muscle and they're used a lot, going from 10 pounds to 15 pounds is a massive jump. Same with for me, going from 25 pounds to 30 pounds is a big jump. I feel it right away. But if I can go from 25 pounds to 27.5 and then get to 30 and go in little increments like that, it's way easier for me to progressive overload when it comes to the load itself. Again, the progressive overload from the load is gonna come from a greater range of motion when it comes to cables because there's already tension right straight through coming all the way up. I can progressive overload from a longer, better range of motion. And that's the biggest part when it comes to exercise selection. What movement can I do on the muscle that's gonna have the most amount of muscle recruitment and I'm gonna connect with it the easiest? It might be dumbbells, it might be cables. When it comes down to it going through all these points, cables are gonna have a better advantage. So maybe as a beginner or if you're having an issue trying to find or feel your muscle when it comes to ladder raises, maybe start off first doing cables and then move into dumbbells when you have a better overall muscle mind connection. So who wins in the end? Cables or dumbbells? Well, for me, it's gonna be whatever you like the best, whatever fits with you. But again, my advice, if you're a beginner, just starting out, and you wanna feel the muscle more, get a better range of motion, understand the better overall muscle mind connection, I would say cables first, edge it out by a little bit. I still love my dumbbells, but use both. How about that? Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed that video. For more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. You guys got my ebook in the link description below, The Final Diet, get it right now. So next time guys, binge watch my videos, and you guys know what it is, Iron Jabber's Iron, progressive overload your life in the meantime. Keep gym chasing. Peace.